Hello everyone, welcome to Passive Wrappings. My name is Steve Sarajian. I'm happy to be back here in the studio bringing you more visual artists and designers from Eastern Massachusetts. And today, we're recording in Randolph, and I've got one of Randolph's own sons here, Jamal Eversley. How are you doing today, Jamal? I'm good. Nice to, nice to finally talk to you again, man. It's, it's nice to talk to you. So you're a painter. Yeah. So painter. what kind of painting is it that you do? Um, I would say that I do pop art paintings. Okay. Um, what I, what I mean by that is that they're very colorful, so they pop mm -hmm. um, on white backgrounds. That's usually in gallery walls. And I use a lot of symbols that you might find um, in like everyday life. So like target signs and hearts. Um, I've also created a symbol called the nerd, which is in uh, most of my paintings. And we can talk more about that at some point. Um, and yeah, they're, they're, they're very colorful. The color, I guess, I guess I got that from my Caribbean background. Um, as you can see, color is life for me. Yes, that's uh, <laughs> certainly the case. So yeah. when is it you started as a painter? Well, I, I've always been an artist. Mm -hmm. I guess all artists say that. Um, I remember I went to Disneyland around six years old, and I was drawing Mickey Mouse um, at one of like the um, Disney carnival rides there, mm -hmm. and this this woman came up to me and was like, "said that's that's really good. Yeah, you're, you're a talented six year old," and I've been drawing ever since, um, and using color pencils ever since. When it came to painting, I didn't start painting until sophomore junior year of college. I went to Babson College, which is a business school, and the art. The art I felt was lacking in my life, mm -hmm. so I took every single art class that I could then, and uh, painting was one of them. And the minute I took that painting class, I never looked back, because it's all about color. It's about color mixing and color relation. So we're gonna look at some of your work shortly, mm -hmm. but um, there are very strong, very vibrant colors, which uh, makes up a big part of your personality as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, how much would you say, you mentioned that Caribbean background. Yeah. So when did it become evident that that was having a big influence on the work that you were doing? Was it always there? Is that something that sort of emerged naturally, or was that a very conscious decision that you made? Um, to, be, to be honest with you, it was, it was natural, you know. Um, I guess uh, to think, you know, if I think on it now, my mother was always wearing colorful dresses. You know, I was, um, I grew up in a household with my mother, my aunt, uh, my grandmother, and uh, my cousins, uh, my uncle. And the women, the women were always wearing colorful clothing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're, they're picking clothing for me, so I'm always wearing colorful clothing. I remember I was wearing like a purple um, sweater to school back in the day. Um, Sometimes I got teased for that. <laughs> but I think because I always saw color, I was always wearing color, that was just, it's just in my blood, you know, and I'm not, I'm not afraid of it. Um, and because of that, now I use color in my paintings. So my paintings are bold, and the color that I wear are bold. So it's like making a statement of, here I am, this is me. So you're a Babson alumni. Yeah. How has that training in business affected your art? Would you say that it's affected in any way or affected your art career? Oh, man. You know, um, if you asked me this question nine, ten years ago, I would have told you that I should have went to art school mm -hmm. or something of that effect. But now looking back on it, I realized that, and um, I guess I'm giving Babson a plug, so what's up, Babson? That Babson prepared me for the art world because I realized that everything is a business. Being an artist is a business. You have to learn how to market yourself, promote. You have to know how to do your taxes. You have to know how to sell your artwork and how to sell it to different individuals at different times. Um, 
and creating a brand. And taking, um, I, I graduated with a business degree by a concentration in leadership um, and basically taking a lead in not only your life, but in the community. Um, and I've used that with my artwork. So um, Babson, I feel like, put me a step or so ahead of, the, of, of an artist because at least I know the business side of it as well. Mm. I know how to present my artwork. Now, when you're talking about presenting your artwork, um, since you're taking that sort of approach from that background that you have, who would you say are the people who would be most interested in the kind of work that you do? Who generally are the people who find interest in it? Well, that's a great question. I would say because, you know, right now a lot of my artwork is about the nerd. Mm -hmm. The nerd um, represents the individual who has a passion to, to gain knowledge in anything that they love. They're obsessed about it. So, um, like you, you could be a nerd for art. Mm -hmm. You could be a nerd for comics. You could be a nerd for fitness. You could be a nerd for anything, really. It's, it's that passion to gain that knowledge. Also, the nerd represents um, the individual who is bold. Like, um, he, 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 he wears the clothes that he wants. Um, he speaks about what he wants to believe in. It's about being bold. So the individuals who feel like they're nerds, um, closet nerds or outward nerds, mm -hmm. or the individuals who say, you know what, I am who I am, um, those are the ones who connect, and those are the ones I'm trying to connect with. And um, I feel like, all in all, that's everybody. Everyone's a nerd somehow, and everyone is trying to be their best selves. Now, you mentioned that you study leadership and that really helps you with your community engagement. Yes. So you actually had a show that was actually at a community center, an empowerment center, in yeah, fact. Yes, yes, yes. And we actually do have some footage of that okay. that yeah, we can okay. go to now. Right. So we're going to cue that up yeah. and uh, see your work. Right on, right on. Right now we're at the RTI Empowerment Center in Stoughton. Uh, this is a new community center. It's uh, ran by Royal Laredon. So the Empowerment Center is about building community awareness and strengthening teen, teen empowerment, basically. Uh, me and Royal, we've been friends for about six years and he really supports my artwork. So I have the first art show at the RTI Empowerment Center. And he also wanted me to paint this mural. So this is what I've been working on for the past two weeks. Um, we can talk more about this in a second. But basically, uh, this is my main character in all my artwork. He's the nerd. His name is Spencer Ward. This is going to be a bookshelf. So um, it works well to have a nerd right here being painted underneath the bookshelf. This is the Eatville High series, AKA Smells Like Teen Spirit series. Basically, this whole series encapsulates what my artwork is about. It's about uh, the teen spirit, teen rebellion, uh, finding yourself in high school. 
So as we go through this wall of artwork, uh, I'll mention how each piece is a different character that you might find in high school. Um, we can start with this first piece. This is called Prom Queen. Uh, her name is Kim Ward. All the names are fictitious. I made them up. Um, when I think of a prom queen, I think of her name being Kimberly, the popular girl. So this piece for, uh, is based off the Andy Warhol Marilyn Monroe piece, the famous Marilyn Monroe piece. So that's why you see the gold and the pink and some of the turquoise in the, in the piece as well. So I wanted to have it be called prom queen because of the gold. It's like the crown of her. Um, so we can move on to the next one. Again, these are all abstract versions of individuals that you might find in high school. Uh, this is Alvina Adams. This is the nerd's love interest, um, his best friend, you can say. She is like the misfit, the outcast of the high school. Um, so I try to do that with the different types of patterns, um, contrasting and clashing off of each other. Um, so that's Alvina Adams. This is the nerd's best friend. He's the band geek, Stuart Adam, uh, Anders. When I think of a band geek, I think of an individual who's very spirited. They're the ones in a pep rally trying to um, uh, liven up the crowd and all that. So as you can see, that's why I put all different types of colors um, and polka dots within this piece. Um, uh, so this is color pencil, as in with um, the prom queen, that's color pencil as well. So I mix between paint and color pencil. This right here is Andy Wu. Andy Wu, you could say he's the math genius of the, of the group. So I tried to put that in by doing a lot of uh, geometrical shapes and hard lines and hard edges. Um, also with the color, uh, I used very muted colors. Um, because, you know, he's more worried about the mind. This is the clouds right here. His, mind's is in, his mind is in the clouds, figuring out the math that he's going through. And this last piece that I'll talk about for right now is Michael Davis. That's the jock. So, you know, there's the opposite sometimes of the jock versus the nerds. So with the jock, I use the color red really strongly in this piece. Um, if you see a lot of teams in high school, in college, even in uh, professional leagues, they use red. Red is for fierceness, it's for boldness. Uh, so that's why I use a lot of red. This is the abstract um, look of maybe a football player looking through a helmet. So that's the jock. These paintings were done in 2017, and um, the, the drawings were done in 2012. So these paintings of mine are a little bit more crisp. crisp. They have more of my style in them. Um, and this piece right here is called Takashi Tanaka. Takashi is actually the foreign exchange student that you might find in your classroom. I based it off of Japanese comic books, manga books um, that you might be reading. So I did that with the colors that I used. The yellow, you could see, and then also the light blue and the stripes of purple and red in them. So I tried to mix out a lot of hard edges and mixed it with the polka dots and the, and the other big polka dots, similar to you might find in some Japanese comic books. So let's move on. This right here is Bob Noah Thompson. She is the pretty prep girl that you might find in your class. Uh, I did that based off of the checkered stripes that you might find in some seersucker pants, and also the turquoise and the pink that you might find maybe like, I know it's not high school, but in sororities. So that's how I based it off of um, making her like the prep, the preppy girl that you might find in your classroom. Also, if you see right here, I started doing this in roughly 2013, 2014. This is actually my signature um, on all my paintings and artwork going forward. Um, that is based off of one time I read that, there's, that they were painting a lot of masterpieces over again. 
and you couldn't tell the differences. So I said, what is one thing that you can't copy no matter what? Your fingerprint. So that going forward is my signature on all my artwork. This is the class clown. Uh, in every high school there's a class clown uh, making everyone laugh. Uh, Bart Jones. So it's very colorful, it's very bright, just like the class clown making everyone laugh. This is the newest version of the Bang Geek, Stuart Anders. Um, as you can see, my edges got stronger. I got the pop of color uh, to make it very spirited. So this right here is the goth chick, Alvina Adams, and this right here is the nerd, Spencer Ward. I specifically put these two together for a reason. They're supposed to be the best friends in, in the class, in Eastville High. So Spencer Ward is in love with Alvina Adams. Um, Alvina, as we talked about before, she is the misfit of the high school. Um, you know, she has a carefree attitude. Uh, she does what she wants to do. And Spencer, he's in love with that. Spencer is your typical nerd, the nice guy, glasses. Um, he's orange because orange represents bold. It represents youthfulness. It represents happiness and bright. So the nerd is always orange. And Alvina Adams, she's more subdued, as you can see with the dark greens. And the neon yellow is, is also her boldness. It's about the spirit of doing what's best for her. So that's just why I put these two together. They're best friends, but of course, Spencer's in love with Alvina, and Alvina just sees him as a friend. Uh, she friend zoned him, as you can say. So we're going to go back to the mural that I'm actually painting for the center that will be unveiled during the um, opening ceremony. So here you can see, again, the nerd, Spencer Ward. This painting, the working title, is called Orange is the New Black. So why did I call it Orange is the New Black? I'm trying to promote nerdiness. I'm trying to promote um, intelligence. Nerd is the new cool. So as you can see, it's my patterned polka dots and my stripes and my hard edges mixed with some soft edges. The nerd is always, like I said, orange because um, orange represents the boldness. So this is Orange is the New Black. So in that footage, we got introduced to a lot of the characters yeah. that show up in your work. Yeah. So there's a high school theme, the obviously, high school. running through. Uh, what was it about, what would you say today about high school and about why you chose it as a theme for so much of your work? Yeah. Um, so like I said, uh, I want my artwork to connect with everybody. Um, so in high so one thing that most, if not everyone, can relate to as adults is high school. Everyone had to go through high school, right? So while you're in high school, um, you might have loved it, you might have hated it, you might have felt indifferent about it, but you were someone in high school, you, and you were someone to someone else. Um, so looking back on it now, uh, me, you, uh, the audience, it's all about who were you in high school and, and what does that, uh, uh, that person that you were in high school, who did they become? What did, that, what did you develop from that? Um, and, did it, and in a sort of way, did it make you a better person when you reflect on that? Um, so that's, that's really what the high school series is all about and it, it ties right back down to being yourself. Um, I think in there you, you heard me saying that I was a nerd. Mm -hmm. um, I was getting called a nerd all the time and I, didn't, and I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy being a nerd in high school, you know, getting called Steve Urkel every single day. But I realized now, um, what is it, 12, 14, whatever years later, um, 
to own up to it. I am who I am. If I'm a nerd, so be it. You know, nerds, nerds run the world. <laughs> How long have you been working with these, all these different characters in your work? To, to be honest with you, Stephen, I've been working with these characters since that painting class at Babson. Yeah? Yeah. So from the very beginning from of the, your, very, the time you've been thinking of yourself as a painter. At the time I think of myself as a painter, I, I always, my, my mission in life really is to connect people um, and to create community. And I always was trying to figure out in my work, um, how can I connect people? Um, and I was trying, to, and I was doing it with love, and my, you know, love is always a running theme in my work still to this mm -hmm. day. But I wanted something that would be a strong connector, and I felt it was high school. So um, I've been running with that since that painting class, really. Well, I know that you also do some work in the community as well as part of that, that thing that, that empowers your work. Yes. So what are some of the programs that you've been doing in the community yes, that yeah. run in that, that theme? Right, right on. So for the past um, two years now, I've been doing the Bold and the Beautiful Teen Art Exhibit. Um, basically, I've gotten up to seven grants now, I believe, from different um, cultural councils throughout uh, Massachusetts to go into the high schools and talk to the um, art classes there about my, my trajectory of an artist and my trajectory in high school about me being a nerd and me being teased um, and how it was being teased but you know, now that bullying is such a big aspect in high school, how can you um, put those feelings that you might be feeling that aren't so great into something positive um, to, to um, to like inspire other people who might be feeling the same way. So I go in and talk to the students about that. Um, and I show them my artwork about the nerd and how I'm proud to be a nerd now and how it's all in my artwork. And they too can be talking about themselves. It could be something that they love. It could be about their family. It could be something that maybe they're getting teased about and they're not happy, but that's who they are and that's who they should be proud of. Um, and so I asked them to create a piece of artwork um, about, that represents themselves. So it's running off the quote, the things that make me boldly different make me beautiful, right? So what is it that makes you different? That differenceness, like me as a nerd, I'm proud to be that. You should be proud to be that. In that case, that's beautiful. You're a beautiful being because you're being you. So they create an art piece based on that. Um, I frame it using the money mm -hmm. from the grants, and I put on an art show. So I put on three bold and beautiful teen art exhibits. Um, and the last one just happened in June, mm -hmm. uh, mid-June, from mid-May to mid-June. And it was Stoughton High and Canton High, and it was actually at the RTI Empowerment Center. Well, that's great. I was actually there for the opening of yeah. the center. Yeah. It was, um, Really, a lot of enthusiasm was right. going on then. Um, Royale and Stephanie, who are the directors of the center, Royale is the founder of the center. Um, me and him think alike. We want to empower people um, and inspire them. So it was just, it's just been a great collaboration. And um, during the, the Bold and Beautiful Teen Art exhibit at the center, um, we had an open mic night. So. All the teens came and saw the artwork. Their parents came and saw the artworks. The teachers came and saw the artwork all hung up and framed. Um, and they felt proud about it. And I also gave away uh, scholarship money that day, too, for uh, two t four teens who represented themselves the best, who put themselves out there for the rest of the community to see. Um, so, And they had an open mic night, so teens could go up there and uh, talk about poetry or whatever it was on their chest. So you know, it was a beautiful night, it was really empowering, and we're just trying to really empower these teens and make sure that they know that they have a voice and that we're listening to them. So when you're working with a lot of young people yeah. and you're really asking them to be vulnerable with their work right. and really put that forward, is that something that 
is particularly difficult? you see a lot of resistance to that when you come in with a program like this and you try and do that? Yeah, um, so usually what happens is, like I said, I come into the classes mm -hmm. and I talk about myself and I try to make it um, interactive, a dialogue. You know, I don't want to be just speaking to these guys. I get spoken to all day. So I try to make it a dialogue and sometimes, you know, they're shy. I ask them questions like, who are you? Uh, what will your family say about you? Um, and no one really raises their hands. But what I realize is when I ask them to say, you know what, who's your best friend in this class? Like everyone's hands start raising and they say, oh, uh, this person I'm sitting next to is my best friend. And then I ask them, tell me about your best friend. And they start saying the most positive things that they can think about their best friends. And that's when a dialogue really starts happening because, I don't know, uh, it might sound cheesy, but it becomes one big love fest after that. So that's when the team start opening up about their vulnerabilities and, and, and what they might be struggling with. Yeah. Um, usually, really, they, they might not say a lot about it in class when the whole class is there, but it shows up in the artwork. It's been so, uh, I've, I've framed at least over 100 pieces of artwork now, and it's been so many touching, um, I guess you have to say sometimes painful, painful stories um, that these guys actually put out there. So they're vulnerable in the artwork, and so they really get it when they put it, put it in the art. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really difficult thing to do, and it's something which clearly is a running theme in your work, and you're really trying to instill that in a lot of these kids. Yeah, I, I, Stephen, you know, it's just about, for me, it's like, and all my friends, and, and you probably, um, talked to me last year in September, it's like, I just trying to be real. Keep it real, um, and, it's, and in turn, that's gonna be inspirational for someone else. Well, that's great to hear. And um, I'm so glad that you were able to come in today. Thank so you. glad you were able to share that, and we were able to take a look at your work thank and the you. show that you did. Thank you, thank you. So, you I, know. I, I, I wanna present you with this, because uh, sure. uh, I wanna thank you for oh, thank having you. me on the stage. Thank yeah. you. For uh, your packet here? Yeah, it's all, it's all bold and beautiful pieces. So that's nice, I'm gonna go through that later. Yeah, thank you. And uh, I hope that all of you have learned something today, and I hope that um, you'll be able to tune in next time when we have another visual artist or designer from Eastern Massachusetts on to tell us all about what they do. My name is Sinithrajian, this is Passive Wrappings, Keep those fires creativity burning, everyone.